kittens, it's Megan, and I don't know about you, but I am in desperate need for a new start. We've reached the mid-year point of 2021, and so much has happened in the world. This journal has gotten me through a lot so far, but it's time to move on to my next one. The journal I chose this time is an Archer and Olive A5 dot grid journal from the Greater Good Collection. It features 160 crisp white pages that are thick enough to handle anything I can throw at them, and I absolutely love the holographic edges and star details. I always love that new notebook feeling, but I don't always love the struggle with getting the notebook to behave while I do my setup. See what I mean? Another struggle with the beginning pages is the lack of support under the left side of the journal. My Kern Bujo comes in handy here, and I like to use it to prop up the left side while I work. The further I get into the journal, the less this issue will come up, but for now, this is a great solution. Before I started filming this setup, I went in and penciled in a few things. I always find it easier to get a good aesthetic when I plan these things out in advance. My color scheme for the setup of this journal is vastly different from my last one, which was black and white, but I needed a pop of color in my life, so I chose a collection of rainbow mild liners. For my key, I decided to do the header in big bold letters and let little pops of color mark the different symbols I use in my journal. My key really hasn't changed much in the last year or so, but I find it helpful when I flip through old journals to see what I was using back then. The symbols I use indicate tasks, when they're completed, canceled, migrated or scheduled, notes, events, appointments, important information, and a little symbol to indicate notes about my writing. The last thing I did before moving on was fill in the header with a small Tombow brush pen, and that was the setup of my key. Next, I wrote my name and date that I planned to fully move into this journal, and then I was ready to move on with the rest of my setup. One thing I always contend with in the beginning of the journal is the dreaded first page that is always glued down in a funky way so you can't even open it up all the way. My solution is to tape the first page to the end paper and it gives the next page of my journal a bit more heft, which is a good thing because it's my grid spacing cheat sheet. I really love symmetry when it comes to my journal, so this page is invaluable. I flip to it frequently when I'm planning the designs for future spreads, and having it here in the beginning of my journal is incredibly helpful. I tend to split my pages up in halves, thirds, fourths, and fifths depending on what I'm doing. And this way, I don't have to sit there and guess how many dots I need to make things even on the page. I also added a number column along the side and across the top of the pages so I can easily see the numbers I need with no guesswork involved. One thing I like to include in the beginning of all of my journals is a quote page. The one I chose for this journal is, if your dreams don't scare you, they aren't big enough. I have a lot of dreams, and I'm terrified that I might fail, but I'm still excited to go after them. Part of the reason I bullet journal is to help me achieve my goals, and having this quote in the beginning of the journal is a good reminder of that. finished off this page by doodling a bunch of little stars and a little moon, and that's it for the quote page. One page that I find pretty useful when it comes to planning ahead is the future log. Instead of focusing on the full year like I did in my last journal, I decided to split the page into seven boxes. The next six months all get their own space, and I use the remaining box to list anything that might need to be planned after that. By only including the next six months, which is the average lifespan of a bullet journal for me, I'm not wasting a bunch of time and effort on information that I don't need in this particular journal. But I still give myself a little bit of wiggle room just in case I turn out to be wrong. 
In order to not move the journal and ruin the shot, I ended up having to go in at the monthly titles for each calendar at an angle, which was hard to do with my lighting setup, but in the end it worked and I'm really happy with how open and bright this page looks. This page is probably the most tedious to set up, if only because I have to write out the tiny calendars over and over again. I swear, setting up this page in every journal may be the reason I develop carpal tunnel later in life. I added the final touches, and then we move on to the next page. In my last journal, my goal settings page became a complete and utter mess within the first few weeks. I definitely did not want that for this journal, so I decided to tackle my goals with a little bit more structure. I took the goal settings page I made in my last journal and crossed out all of the goals that I had already achieved, the ones that were no longer relevant, and the ones that turned out to be something I didn't want anymore. When I took the remainder, I split them up into six areas. Health, spiritual, home, writing, reading, and YouTube. I left space in case I decide to add more goals later, but I feel like these long-term, less instant gratification goals are better suited for the beginning of the journal, and then I can focus on the short-term goals later. Okay kittens, stay with me, we only have a few more pages to go. The next page of my journal is not something that a lot of people will need, but if you are a forgetful, hot mess, trying to stay on top of their spiritual journey like me, this page is a necessity. On this page, I've included a cheat sheet for the pagan holidays as well as the moon phases, and what each phase means. Spiritual woo-woo aside, this page actually helps me set goals on a monthly schedule because I do it during the phases of the moon, and it keeps me accountable. Ever since I implemented this structure, I feel like I've achieved a whole lot more of my short-term goals than I ever have before. The next page only has a title right now, and that is because I'm still deciding all of the details of this project. I am binding a personal grimoire, and I've yet to decide on all of the details except for the aesthetic. So that's going to include some fun things like tea stained paper and hand painted watercolor pages. I might do a video on this later, but I feel like this may turn into an intensely personal project and I haven't made any final decisions yet. What I can show you is the Kanban board I designed for my bookbinding hobby. There are five basic steps to completing a book in the styles that I've been learning right now, and since I'm making journals for family and friends, I needed a way to keep track of where each book is in that process. I plan on using post-it flags to write the name of the person I'm making the book for, and move it down the list as I go. If you guys are interested in a video about bookbinding, please let me know in the comments below. I would be happy to share what I'm learning. The next few pages are pretty blank right now, but I will be filling them in off camera. I am a writer, and one of the big projects that I'm taking on for the next six months is finishing the second draft of my novel with some heavy rewrites. Alongside that, I'm going to be creating a personal novel bible for my book. How? I have no idea yet, but I wanted a page to brainstorm on. Next up is my YouTube cheat sheet. This is where I keep statistics, my channel roadmap, and a handy list of video categories that I can use to inspire content. I also needed a designated place to brain dump any video or Instagram ideas. Finally, in this setup, we have my financial overview. On this page, I'm going to be putting my reoccurring bill tracker, debt tracker, and savings tracker. Still haven't decided on the final design of these yet, but I'm really excited to get on top of my finances. And we are done. Here is the flip through of all of the pages that I set up in this video. The total time it took me to set up my beginning spreads from the first touch of the pen to the last swipe of my liner took a total of one hour and 45 minutes.
I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Maybe even think about subscribing to my channel. If you do, make sure to click on that bell notification icon to get notified whenever I post new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in my next one.